There are no holidays from holiness. There are no holidays from holiness. And there are no holidays from serving a holy God. God has given me, God has given me a very special, brief, but special, I feel, Labor Day message to you. So listen up. Happy Labor Day, but listen up and hear the Word of God and fear God. I always think it's tragic when football season begins and the view numbers for preachers like me do go down in the dumps and church attendance do declines because people would rather stay home and watch football, college football, NFL football, <laughs> than hear about the faith. Yeah. The fire behind me, you see the fire? It's intentional. It's a prop. If you make football your God instead of God the Father, and football is more important to you than God and it becomes your idol, there's your future. There's your destiny. You don't need a psychic or a shaman tea leaves <laughs> or horoscopes or a crystal ball no or a Ouija board you need the Bible I'm telling you your future if you'd rather watch a game or play a game than be in God's house and listen to God's word friend you have an idol problem faith or football I'm not saying I'm not against football I love football but I love faith more I love football but I love God the Father more Praise God. I want you to, to open your Bible today to Philippians chapter 3 and verse 8. And while you're turning to Philippians 3 and verse 8, I just want to ask you some questions as I have coffee around the fire today. A little fireside chat. Why do I have fireside chats? Because the fires of hell are real. Those of you that have been watching my videos from Arlington Cemetery, from JFK's grave, the eternal flame. The real eternal flame is hell. And the only thing worse than being buried alive is being burned alive. Catch up on my videos if you've been watching football instead of watching my videos. Amen. We need priorities and passions and pursuits that make God number one in our life. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 8 is what we're going to read. But before we get there, I want to just ask you a question. What were the scriptures for Jesus and the apostles? <laughs> they were the Old Testament. I, I just want you to think about that. I love y'all. You, oh, just preach the New Testament. Just preach grace. Just preach love. Well, the love of God is not a New Testament concept. It's in the Old Testament. So is the grace of God. The scriptures for Jesus and the apostles were the Old Testament. As I was praying this morning and, and meditating before God, the Lord said, tell the people to get off the apps because they lead to apostasy and instead return to the acts of the apostles. Oh, if you've ever listened to a preacher, you ought to do rewind, go back and listen to that. You need to forget about greed and gain and vainglory and realize what Paul said in the text that I asked you to look up. Philippians chapter 1. How many of you found it? You need to memorize the books of the Bible. Amen. You need to get back to memory verses, back to vacation Bible school. You don't need coding camp, Cody. You need cross camp. Are you listening to me? Philippians chapter 1, the words of the Apostle Paul. 
He said, for me to live is Christ, but to die is gain. Now I want you to think about that. I want you to rewind that and, and listen to it and, and, or go to Philippians 1.21 and read it a hundred times. For me to live is Christ. Christ is not a hobby. Christ is not a part-time job. Christ is not a pastime. Christ is my life. He is Christ, who is my life, is coming. To live is Christ, not cash, but Christ. To live is Christ and to die is gain. The only way you can go to a better place is if you're in Jesus Christ. The only way you can RIP, rest in peace, is if you are in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. To live is Christ and to die is gain. That is my motto. And I want you to understand. I want you to understand that to gain heaven, to gain heaven, you have to lose all things of this earth. Somebody says, Brother Mike, how do you get that? From Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 8. Flip over a couple of pages. In chapter 2 and 21, he said, For all seek their own, not the things that are Jesus Christ. Are you living to get a profit? Or are you listening to the prophets of Almighty God? Are you living for yourself? Or are you loving neighbors? your neighbor as yourself. Are you living the dream, living the American dream, or are you living the Christian dream? In Philippians 3, 8, Paul says, Yea, doubtless, I count all things, not some things, all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. Do you know Jesus? Or do you just know about Jesus? Do you have a relationship with God? And are you the righteousness of God in Christ? Or do you just have a religion? And then he says, For whom I have suffered the loss of all things. Listen, today we just want gain. We want success. We want materialism. But Paul says, Count all those things as loss. He says, I do count them but dung. That I may win Christ. If you spend your whole day on the smartphone, you're not being smart. You're being dumb, and it's dumb. God says, Paul says, forget all things. Lose all things. Let them go. Leave all, lose all, and love all for Jesus Christ, signing your life away on the bottom dotted line of commitment. Now, that's what the Bible says. Somebody says, well, <laughs> I don't like Paul. Well, look, it don't matter if you like Paul. It doesn't matter if you like Evangelist Mike Dial. Is Paul right? Yes. Was Peter right? Was James and Jesus and John right? Is Mike Thou right? Yes. Amen. Are you better than Paul? No. Are you better than Peter, James, John, or Jesus? No, you bet you're not. So as I close today in front of the fire, I want you to realize this. I want you to realize this. The principle that Paul lived by turned to a, a second verse today, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, we're actually going to start in verse 7. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Today, everything's about websites and visual and video and TV and telecommunications. But Paul says we walk by faith, not by sight. Hallelujah. God, hallelujah. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Forget about screens. Forget about screens and come back to the scriptures. Stop swiping and scrolling like a troll and come back to the scriptures. Quit searching Google and search the scriptures. We walk by faith, not by sight. Why? Because Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing. Hearing, here, look at my ear. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God, not by seeing, not by sight. He says in verse 8, we're confident and willing rather, look, this is what I want to talk about. To be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Hallelujah. When you die as a believer, it's not the end of anything. It's the beginning of everything. But for huh, the lost without Christ, it is spiritual death. It is the end of your hopes. It is the end of your dreams in the prison of hell. And that's why, and this is why, this is my Labor Day message, verse Number nine, wherefore we labor, we work, we labor. Listen on Labor Day. Wherefore we labor, 
that whether present or absence, we may be accepted of Him. It's not about accepting Christ or receiving Jesus. It's, does Jesus accept you? Does Jesus receive you? It's not about coming to God just as I am without one plea. You better not come just as you are. You better come repenting, quaking, shaking, trembling in the terror and the fear of God. This is what we're to labor for. Paul said, work out, labor out your salvation with fear and trembling. That's in the Bible. I don't care if you deny it. It's in the Bible. Don't lie about it. It's what the Bible says. Somebody said, well, you preach a works-based salvation. Yeah, I preach that my faith should be in the finished work, hallelujah, of Jesus Christ. Grace is not God's power just to forgive sin. It's God's power to help you overcome and have triumphant victory over sin. And finally, verse 10, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Judgment day is coming, that everyone may receive the things done in his body. His body, your body matters. Don't be a Gnostic. Don't be narcissistic. Don't be in nepotism. According to what he's done, whether it be good or bad, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Do you know the terror of the Lord? Do you know the terror of the Lord. Soon every one of us will be absent from the body and present with the Lord. There is a heaven to gain and there is a hell to shun. I still preach against sin. I still preach the terror of the Lord. I still preach that the fires of hell are real. I love you today. Happy Labor Day. But labor, labor, work in God because faith without works, faith without labor, is dead being alone. That's what the book of James says. The book of James says, don't be just hearers of the word, having preachers that tickle your ears, but instead be doers of the word. Put down your doers whiskey, hallelujah, and be doers of the word of God. Put down your scotch and soda and pick up scriptures about the Savior. I love you today. I love you today. God bless you. God bless you. And happy Labor Day.